Endless Legend is a 4x strategy game much like civilization games except actually good. Explore and colonize new lands, build and manage an empire, exploit the land and tame primitive tribes, meet new empires, engage in diplomacy, you done fucked it up, and become the greatest of nations. To understand what type of game Endless Legend is, you must understand what 4x stands for. Kill everything, win. X videos. The goal of a game of Endless Legend is simple. Become the best in any of these before anyone else. Ow! To achieve this, you must explore. Find and search these ruins that have a chance of giving you nothing. Or give you a multi-part quest that gives you a number of stat boosting resources and a late game weapon that makes your hero overpowered. Expand your empire by settling new regions or oh, by settling someone else's. Exploit the land, the people, the AI. This border around your city means every tile within it is being exploited. Food for growing your city and gaining more <coughs> workers, which can be allocated to produce more of a resource within your city. Industry for constructing buildings, which do anything from increasing resource production to gathering boosters or strategic metals, as well as creating units who will wield these powerful weapons. Science. For researching new technology such as buildings buffs units upgrades online shopping race specific techs no money or dust for paying upkeep and buying out buildings or anything online and influence which only really one race can exploit but it's used for setting stat increasing empire plans every 10 turns and deploy <coughs> <coughs> oh. every region has a village in it so either complete the quests bribe them or negotiate to gain them as a worker. Spend influence to assimilate them into your faction. You will work and die for the Hidden Leaf Village. Finally, exterminate. The optimal way to play. Much like the English pioneers, if something isn't the same color as you, destroy it. If someone settles a new city near you, acquire it. If you can't complete a village quest, turn them into food. However, to exterminate, we must talk about combat. Combat is shit, but it's a lot better than Civ. I will explain everything because it's confusing as combat takes place in the game world drawing in any units in this border each turn you can give each unit a suggestion on what to do press play and watch as none of your units get a turn because the enemy units have higher initiative than yours let's look at stats life self-explanatory speed how many tiles it can move attack likelihood of hitting defense likelihood of taking reduced or no damage from an attack initiative determines when a unit gets their turn damage Good. Alright, let's say Samurai Kail attacks Shonen Maikeru before he's had his turn. They both get to attack each other and that uses up Shonen Maikeru's turn. So he can't move or attack this round. Down here are the attack and defense percentages for Samurai Kairu's attack. Chance to deal regular damage, chance for the attack to be blocked and deal half damage, chance for the attack to deal 50% more damage, chance for the attack to be blocked and take zero damage. There are five unit classes that are really just two, melee and ranged. Focus down one guy with ranged units and defend them with melee units. Win. Hover over this stuff and read it, and if the battle screen wheel looks like this, do this. Honestly, combat isn't that bad, it's just you don't have much control and it's all based on random chance. It's fun getting your hero and units to be overpowered with the right equipment, but if you don't have the right equipment, you you're just gonna lose. Just don't even try. I will now explain every faction, as they all have something unique that makes them play slightly differently from one another. Have you heard of the High Elves? Well, these guys are Wood Elves, but not the sophisticated kind. I mean like the, yo that tree looking kinda kind of bad though. Wild Walkers, build. The more trees in your city, the more industry you get. So to win, get to the last part of your faction questline and build the wonder. They also possess the Kike Genkai. So if anyone walks near your border, you can sense where they are. Send your archers, which have stupid range, to snap them into the dirt to provide nutrients as fertilizer to the almighty trees. Build three colossal titans to protect your archers, put them in trees, win every battle. The Mazari are a reskin of the Volters. However, they look much cooler than the Volters, so this fact is reversed in my head canon. Technology, they get more science from tiles, so put your head down like a good Japanese high school student studying for Daigakuse entrance exams and research everything. Study hard and win by researching the final five big techs. They can activate strategic resources like titanium as a booster, which gives them more science production. They some teleport armies between cities with no range limit or cooldown, yep, OP. And it makes units equipped with weapons and armor of that resource benefit 50% more from it. Speaking of units, they're well-rounded and this is a cavalry unit. Yep. Bro, you're talking mad shit for someone with the Dawn Officer range. Ardent Mages are just 
Gachi Mochi, straight up. The more pain and torture your empire is in, the stronger it becomes. Spend dust to put pain pillars down all over your cities and reap the benefits. Yeah, this is pretty much their only gimmick, but it means that they can pretty much perform well in most play styles and go for different victory types. This unit is very good. This unit deals more damage if it gets attacked first. And this unit takes too long to build. These are spells you can cast during combat. Don't. That money goes towards more pleasure poles. $19 Fortnite card. You know how Darth Nihilus is just like the force underneath his mask? Yeah, these guys are just ethereal money underneath. You don't need food because you don't eat food. You absorb dust. You don't create workers, you buy them. Buildings, buy it. Pacification, bribe it. Cheap Yui Kahama and Yukino Shida from Yahari Ordino Session, Love Comedy wa Machiga Teiru figures that would look really well together. Refrain from purchasing, as they are merely models made of plastic, which serve no greater purpose than a fleeting moment of joy upon unboxing and placing them within your quarters, only for that feeling to fade as they become mere decoration that occasionally warrants a passing glance as it continues to collect dust. Wait, dust? Yeah, just chuck all your workers on dust productions, buy everything, make a bunch of armies, heal them with dust, win after making enough money. Trade offer. I receive 8% of every transaction on the market, you receive market ban, because you attacked my wandering unit 50 turns ago. Roving clans are just capitalism, the faction. Immediate access to the market, and you get 8% of any sale. Although, the AI doesn't buy much, so it's probably only good in multiplayer. You can't declare war, so you can pretty much just turtle the whole game. Buy everything like the Broken Lords and win economically. Bug Boy. It's Terminate. Or Life. Feed to City. City grow big. When Faction meets Bug Boys, they close their borders. Meaning, Bug no walk into their lands. Man asks to open borders. Costs too much influence. Bug Boy. Declare war. Costs small influence. One more equal big bug boy more than one war equal bigger bug boy slug bug boy spit on food food die food become bug boy big bug army big bug win most karens ask to see your manager this karen knows where every manager is on the map in the same way roving clans can turtle for an economic victory skyrim can just sit around generating a thousand influence per turn and win diplomatically diplomacy is simple these are your starting options which opens up if you research the appropriate ticks every time you spend influence to negotiate with another faction you gain diplomacy points generating some each turn based on relationships with other factions if someone declares war on you as dragon's dogma retract their decision for them you don't accept my alliance proposal you will so how do you win as Dragon Age Inquisition for Xbox 360, hard drive required, get heaps of influence, ask an ally for a commercial agreement, trade technologies until you're out of influence, and this bar is green. Do that for like 6 turns and you win. They can exclusively exploit ruins for influence, and the units suck, but you don't fight so it's fine. Alright, cultists are the best and most unique faction. First off, they look so damn cool. They're like twitchy faceless mannequins that don't feel emotion. They only get one city, so where you settle is important, but they can upgrade the city center to a high level and it's harder to attack. So their whole gimmick is they run around and spend influence to convert pacified villages to their cult. This can be done on anywhere on the map, and can even be done when that village belongs to another empire. Doing this gives you a worker. It exploits all the tiles around it like a city, and they exploit any booster or strategic resources in that region as well as spawning a unit for you in every 15 turns. When you capture a city, you destroy it, but generate industry stockpiles and science stockpiles. So, how they play. Generate a shitload of influence. Run around and convert every village. Wait till a weak ass faction settles a new city near yours. Click every converted village and go, gamers rise up. Destroy that city. Make your city stronger. They go, oh, so sorry. You go, give me all your technology, advance faster than any other empire, steamroll every other empire and win by being a chad. Easily the funnest and best faction in the game. Now you're probably wondering, there are 5 other factions you haven't talked about. Well, that is because they are DLC factions that add new game mechanics, quests and world effects, but I don't own them because I am poor. Moving on, music in battles is like, music outside of battle is like, This is some Jeremy Soul level music. Straight banger after banger, but not in the nay nay before you get a whooping way, more like a peace and tranquility. I'm die. 
thank you forever kind of way all right main stuff over this is just tips and how to start off because i was really confused when i first played firstly admire the different main menu backdrops all of these are cool as fuck like the devs didn't need to put this much effort into these main menus but it just gives each faction so much character and gives you insight on how they actually act outside of a top down view kind of just makes me want to make a video about main menus in video games anyway new game select a faction but just play wild walkers it is easiest to understand change this go here select this this is very important for your sanity don't change these first time invite a friend if you have any <coughs> split up your army into four separate units and run the two soldiers and hero all in different directions in the starting region select your settler click this button and hover over to find a place with at least good food and good production try to settle on and near anomalies that look like this when scrolled out because they generate the most resources move your hero and soldiers to the nearest ruin or towards your main quest objective and merge them when possible build the founders memorial first and research language street explore with your hero army and search every ruin and try to fight roaming armies for xp while trying to pacify villages or complete the quest prioritize food and industry first in your city low dust and influence production early on is fine as long as it's not negative prioritize building technologies early on Move your workers around like this so you're getting what you need quicker. Build 4 Boroughs Street around the city centre to upgrade it. Same goes for the streets themselves. The city centre counts as one by the way. Build a settler when you find a good adjacent region and put any food workers into something else because food production stops. Try to research and equip units with relevant armour and weapons when you find another empire. In the top left are different menus for your empire. First is Empire Management. Here you can activate boosters, stockpiles, set your empire plan every 10 turns, assimilate minor factions and just get a general overview of your empire. City list just gives you a general overview of all your cities. Research is where you learn new techs. You can research any techs from your current or past tech eras and you unlock a new era when you research enough techs from your current era. Quests are where you can view your current quests and your faction quests. Academy is where you can view all your heroes. Inspect them to change their equipment and their skills. The left tree is better for heroes leading armies, middle is useless and the right is better for heroes leading cities. Military is where you can see all your armies. Up here you can edit the equipment of your units. New equipment is added every tick era, so try to update them every now and again. And when you research these, existing units and armies can be retrofitted to the latest equipment while inside your territory. <clears throat> Diplomacy is useless, but this is where you do your talking with other factions. To form an alliance or make peace, you need to research that. Otherwise, you stay in a cold war with everyone, which means you can attack them and they can attack you, but not your cities. War declaration is unlocked immediately though. Lastly, the marketplace. You need to research this to unlock heroes and this to buy and sell resources. And most importantly, have fun. There's a lot more to learn, but invite some mates and just have a good time. It can be a fairly slow game even on the fastest setting, but it's a great game to play with mates or watch something while playing. I gave this game my badass seal of approval. This game goes on sale often, so buy it then. But yep, aside from that, Amplitude, uh, make English Legend 2 please, uh, cheer for watching, uh, catch you up my brother.